Yesterday's commentary um, on, on the state budget, Jerry Brown's last budget, uh, reminded me of um, when I was in the Air Force and we would occasionally fly in and out of Guam. And, um, and when you would get the weather forecast, which you always had to do, it was uh, one of three stages. It was either uh, had just stopped raining, it is raining, or it's about to rain. <laughs> So yesterday's budget presentation reminded me of that because what is the fiscal state in California? Well, we've either just been broke, we are broke, or we're going to be broke. So with that, I'll introduce the Director of Finance, Michael Cohen. All right. Thank you all. I think that was uh, very apropos. Um, the big proposal in the governor's budget on where to spend this surplus. It's to fill up our rainy day fund the voters created under Proposition 2. Um, the shading sort of shows the year-by-year -year increases that we've put into our rainy day fund. And we're proposing to make a supplemental deposit of $3.5 billion. That would be combined with the $1.5 billion required by the Constitution, $5 billion in totality, to bring the rainy day fund balance up to $13.5 billion. When the next recession does come, we'll have a chance to either avoid cuts entirely or um, more likely just mitigate the severity of them and maintain as many core programs and services that we possibly can. Um, switching to education, uh, this is a bar chart that tracks Proposition 98 spending for K-14 education, so K-12 and community colleges. As you can see, um, schools took a pretty sizable hit uh, during the recession and reached the low of just over $47 billion in our first year in office uh, with the governor. But since then, we've had a 66% increase. This is really kind of an unprecedented um, <clears throat> accumulation of increases uh, year over year, which has allowed us to pump a lot of money back into the K-12 system. On the K-12 side, as I mentioned, we're proposing to fully fund the local control funding formula. That takes $3 billion to make the last jump here. Uh, two years earlier than scheduled. Uh, we're also the last in career technical education. The last few years we've um, been uh, funding programs on a, on a limited term basis. We're proposing $200 million on a permanent basis uh, for K-12 career technical education, but tying it to the community college program that we created a few years ago, the Strong Workforce Program, that we think is pretty successful. It's a much more regional approach to um, uh, sort of tying industry to, uh, to the community colleges, and we think the K-12 system can successfully link into that. And then to switch gears here uh, to community colleges, the other piece of Proposition 98, we're proposing a $550 million increase in community college funding, which is roughly 4%, uh, but we've got some, some pretty innovative and bold proposals. We're hoping to... Um, be much more focused on accountability and achievement, sort of doing what community colleges are there to do. Uh, Chancellor Oakley over the summer uh, issued a report, a vision for success for the entire system as a whole that really is aimed at being much more metric focused and focusing on those students that we traditionally haven't served, like the low income students. And so we're looking to tie the accountability at the local level to this overall statewide system. Uh, in, in the uh, Vision for Success uh, report. Second, uh, the online college. Uh, we're really targeting a new uh, group of students that right now aren't particularly well served by the community colleges or the rest of the higher education public system. And that's people in the workforce between the age of 25 and 34 that have their high school diploma but yet don't have um, a higher education degree. So there's about two and a half million people there. Those are obviously uh, the workers who are most vulnerable for, during a recession. Uh, you know, when the last recession uh, came, they're the ones that aren't kind of getting their income back to the same level that it was before the recession. And so by targeting these students, we're able to use the te technology of an online university. They're obviously in the workforce. They don't have the same type of time to dedicate to traditional classrooms. And so we're going to develop an, an entire online system to allow them to get certificates and degrees 
and are particularly interested in working with those of you in, in the room who are in the industry and sort of creating, making sure we're creating certificates and degrees that are actually needed out in the workforce so that when they get them, they're qualified for good jobs and kind of have a pathway to improve economically. So now uh, let me transition a little bit to infrastructure. As I mentioned, uh, this is the first full year of SB1 transportation funding, and that lets us put out $4.6 billion in this year's uh, budget combined with the $2.6 billion that we put out in June. Uh, we also have additional infrastructure proposals. As you know, the governor signed two bonds that will be on the ballot in 2018. Uh, we have appropriations totaling $1.3 billion in natural resources and housing so that when those, assuming those bonds are approved by the voters, the money is kind of ready to go and get out on the street as quickly as possible. And then finally, uh, for those of you who are interested in the court system, uh, we, ha we do have $150 million of ongoing money for the courts, but we also have uh, money to restart the court construction program. So that includes the Sacramento Courthouse here that's, uh, that's basically stalled, and uh, we would provide lease revenue bond authority so that 10 courthouses across the state could, could get going. Let me conclude with the chart I've used before, and this really gets to Alan's point about uh, where the state's been recently in terms of uh, the budget. Uh, we're either kind of in deficit or we're in a surplus about to go into a massive deficit. That being said, uh, you can see the last uh, five years or so are really uh, a change in practice. And part of that is really doing more multi-year planning, looking ahead, knowing what our future costs are going to be. It's being cautious in terms of making ongoing spending commitments, and it's putting money into our rainy day funds so that hopefully the next time there is a recession in the state, we're in much better shape than uh, we, w we were in the last one.